So welcome back to the shop, everybody. In this episode, we're gonna be installing a third function factory John Deere hydraulic kit in my John Deere 4066R. Now this should, in theory, work for any four series cab tractor, the 4044, 4052, and the 4066. But you do need to go check the actual part number and compare that. So I picked this kit up right here directly from John Deere. It's called a BLV 10763. I'll list this down in the description. This was an extremely hard kit to get. I've been trying to get it for, honestly, almost a year. Due to supply chain issues, nobody had my stock. I finally found a dealer a state away that had one of these and was willing to sell it to me, so we went and got it. So let me pull everything out. I didn't really see any good resources online other than one video that was kind of vague on the install. So I figured I'd record this process and show how to hook up the third function hydraulics. It's also a good time to note this kit has hard lines to either go to the rear for a third function control or the front for a grapple like I'm doing right here. So if you want to control say a rear hydraulic top link, you could do it, it's one or the other. Although I think I'm gonna run some extra rubber lines to the rear so I can control both directions. It is also worth noting that there is two additional parts that you can add to this kit. This is your hydraulic valve assembly. Let's go ahead and get that out. Your hard lines that goes to the mid mount on the tractor where the loader controls are, the switch inside, the joystick, everything for the cab version tractor. This does not include additional hard lines that go down the loader. They were about $550, so I'm gonna run rubber lines down and this does not include a power beyond. The valve has an extra port in it, I'll show you, and you can order an additional hard line to run to the rear, say if you were gonna hook up something that required power beyond, like a rear backhoe, for example. So do know there is two additional parts you need to add if you want to do those functions. So in this kit comes the new cab joystick control. That's one reason I really want to stick with John Deere. I love this joystick, and this one has the cutout for the switch that'll go in there. This also comes with all the switches and wiring and connectors that should already be in my cab. And it looks like it also comes with a rear mount if you want to mount the rear controls and do that hookup. Again, I wish this kit included T's so I could third function front or rear, either run a loader or a top link. I'm gonna try to figure out how to make that happen down the road. And here is what makes all this work, our big control valve. And thank goodness this looks like it comes with a very nice installation manual with pictures and all kinds of details. And for what this cost, I would expect this, but I am so happy to see this full installation guide. There's also a downloadable format of this online that I have saved. All right, so here I am taking the tractor wheel itself off. I was kind of really not looking forward to this job, thinking it was gonna to be tough to do. It's relatively straightforward, as long as you work nice and slow and remove that last bolt slowly. I actually lowered the tractor back down to where the tire was just off the ground and that kept it from uh, really wanting to fall over on me. This is also a water-filled tire, so it's extremely heavy. This is really a two-person job, but uh, I managed it okay off and back on by myself. So here's the plate that we're trying to remove. This is the whole point of removing the tire. That's 13 millimeter nuts right there. There's three in the back, and you're about to see me go to the forward of the plate right there. The front side, there's two to remove. Plate comes off. This is what protects you. See your two hydraulic valves that's already in there on the tractor. This raises and lowers your three point, does some other work. So here's another look at those two valves, and right there on the right hand side where I'm shoving this in the hole, this is where we're about to install our valve assembly itself. So I need to remove that fitting that I'm pointing at and take that hose loose right there, that hard line. So I'm using a 32 millimeter wrench. This is the one of the larger wrenches that I own to bust that uh, hard hydraulic line loose right there. We've got to take it out. The kit comes with a brand new line that's longer and will accommodate the new valve that we're installing. Now this is probably the toughest part of the whole install. I do not have a wrench that was big enough to fit that nut right there and an expandable wrench also would not work. So I had to use vice grips and it took me a while to get that nut to bust loose. But this is the back side of that hard line that we just loosened up. We have to remove it and take it completely out since it'll no longer work. 
So here we are popping that out, making way for the new longer line to go in that comes with the kit. And that fitting right there that I just loosened the hard line from, you have to take that factory one out. And now I'm installing the new one that will accommodate the new hard line we're going to put in and torquing that to specs. And here is that fitting that I'm about to remove off the back side of the factory valve because we need to put a plug in there. So here's the valve that comes with the kit. I'm about to point to the plug itself right there. We're going to remove that and we're going to go install that in the factory valve where we just removed that hose and fitting from. So here I am plugging that back up. Basically, we're just essentially moving everything over one valve assembly. That's an output line, a power beyond line. So now that I have the plug removed, the kit comes with a 90. We're going to go ahead and thread that in and do not tighten this all the way. You need this 90 loose to kind of fit everything up once it's installed in the tractor. Then you'll do your final tightening on the tractor itself. Take these two factory plugs out right here. That just keeps trash and debris out of the valve while it ships. And it's uh, going to come with these two fittings right here in the kit. You see the side with the O-ring is what will actually thread into the valve body itself. Then I'll get my torque wrench out and I've been torquing everything down to factory specs here. I want to make sure I don't have no leaks or damage any O-rings, so I'm trying to follow the manual directly. So on the back side of that valve, this is your machine surface right here. There is no gaskets, no O-rings or nothing that seals these two valves we're about to stick together. It has to be perfectly machined. So make for sure that you remove that plastic coating and the factory paint and those little red plugs that you see right in there keeping trash and debris out of the holes that all has to come apart and sadly this has to be a perfectly machined surface you see i'm pointing to that's an actual groove you can rake your fingernail across that it's an indention in the machine surface you would think as much as this kit cost i would expect a perfectly machined valve luckily that doesn't go all the way to the edge and cause many sealing issues so this is the back side of that factory valve where we just removed that hard line. There's a plate right here that has three uh, cap head screws. You remove those, take the plate itself off. Now you can see it right there. And that is what the new valve bolts to. It's two mating surfaces right there. Save these screws because that's what's going to screw the valve to the other one. Hard to see with the sunlight and all, but there's the brand new valve that we just put the fittings in. And it is going in where I just removed that plate. So the two mating surfaces are going to fit together perfectly there. Use the same exact three screws you took out and torque them down to factory specs. Now we can install that new hard line. It's just a longer hard line similar to what we removed. And it's going to thread up to that 90 that's on the back side of that brand new valve. The one that we just threaded in and I told you don't tighten all the way. And this is why you kind of have to finagle and move everything together. Get everything started so to speak. And then you can do your final tightening on the tractor right here. So the valve is installed at that point, and there is two factory wiring harnesses that plug into the valve that are already right there on the tractor. So this is the front couplers. It comes with couplers that have grooves cut in them for some snap rings. You only put the front snap ring in, and you're about to see why. It's because we're going to slide this coupler through the mounting hole right there that accommodates it. This is the mid mount of the tractor, and you see it bottoms out on that snap ring we just put in. There is a groove cut that's very visible right there on the back side that you'll put this second snap ring and that's all that holds this coupler into that mounting brackets two snap rings here's the factory hard lines that come with the kit they just go in right behind the battery box very straightforward they go up to those couplers that are nice and loose and you can see the back side where my left hand is is going right to the valve that we just installed and I do want to mention, you can see those red lines right there. They're actually coated cables. The hard line has to go in behind those. And then you just thread it straight to the new valve and to the couplers up front. And I made a mention here. The kit come with O-rings installed on everything. Except at the end of this, I found two O-rings hiding in a bag somewhere that go on the front side of those hard lines before you screw into the couplers. I fired everything up and I had a leak until I found those two O-rings. So there's the back side. We're connected to the valve. The hard lines go down, run underneath. Again, very straightforward process. Go up toward the front loader arm mount, come right back around and thread into the back side of those couplers. That's where you put that O-ring right on the front of that hard line right there. Kind of hard to get in there and tighten everything up, but eventually you can get it figured out with the right tools and you're essentially done as far as all that goes. The last thing to do 
is to put in this uh, separator that keeps your hard lines from rubbing together. You know, you don't want a whole rub through them. It's just a plastic clamp with a bolt that goes through the middle. Put that all together, and now you can put your wheel back on, your plate back on. You're done with the underneath side of the tractor. Next, we'll move into the cab to finish up the wiring portion. So take this screw out of the console there. There's one screw right here and a third screw in the back in this little cup holder section. And then take these two screws right here out of the handle itself and it'll separate. Now you can pop that entire console up and out if you do that. So there's that one little piece that comes out around your uh, little control arms. I'm taking the joystick control apart right now. And the entire console just kind of slides up and over that joystick uh, shaft right there. And underneath, luckily, the cab tractors already provide all the harnesses and wiring to connect to a switch and to the joystick control. And again, all the wiring was provided underneath the tractor to plug right into the valve too. So if you look underneath, there's this one's labeled like third EH control, third SCV control, something like that. I can't hardly read it. Um, it's labeled very easy to understand. This is a switch that comes with a kit. It's an offer on switch for your third selective valve, and it also has a three position where you can press it down and it'll do always own hydraulic flow up front. That's kind of neat for an idea I have in the future. Here's the new joystick control. Just slide your switch in, route the wire down the handle, clamp it together and bolt it right back through that joystick shaft, just like the factory one was. And you'll have to push the wire down in through that boot. I had to make a slight uh, slit in that boot because it was so tight. And just where my hand is, where I went underneath, right down in the console right there is a plug waiting on you to plug this in. The factory already provides it. Very straightforward. And you're done with the kit at that point. So here's some rubber hoses. I have had my local hydraulic shop made up. And those are the end fittings that actually plug into the factory quick couplers that we just installed. And I'm just going to run some rubber hoses down my loader arm to connect to my grapple. So I'm fishing it down through that loom kind of protective material that the factory lines are already going through right now. And I'll come out down the bottom. You could buy John Deere's Hardline Hydraulic uh, install kit that goes in right here. I just opted for the rubber hose route for my local shop. You can see it just goes right down this loom. Keeps everything nice and protected and allows it to move up and down freely with the loader arms right through there. It kind of looks factory and plugged right into those new couplers that we have. So the loader arm itself already come with holes in it for some reason, probably to add hard lines and whatever else. So I made sure nothing was behind that hole and I'm tapping it out, actually threading it for some bolts that I have. And I'm just going to clamp my hard lines right there and try to make things look nice and neat and uh, out of the way. And I'm actually using a clamp that come with the kit. It's really a clamp made for hard lines if you ran that third control valve hard lines to the rear. And I just bolted it in right here. It worked perfect. Now those rubber hoses aren't going anywhere. A little dab of some super glue that's made to bond to metal. And I'll never have to worry about that bolt backing out. There's my lines wrapped around the front. I'll discuss that a little further uh, in detail in just a minute. Right up the control arm. There's that clamp. Has everything looking nice and neat. Now it's time to fire the tractor up, run the control uh, or the loader arms up and down. I need to make a few adjustments. I'm a little tight right there with my hoses. Pull some slack back and I just continue to run it up and down to make sure everything has good free range of motion. And you want to make sure you go all the way up and down. So after a few minutes of adjusting there, I have everything right where it needs to be. It's all looking good. So now time to hook up the grapple. Okay, so I just got back from the hydraulic shop and man, what an experience that's been. The grapple's been up there about six days. Turns out everything on here is metric, especially all the odd fittings going into the cylinders. And uh, hydraulic shop looked from Atlanta to Ohio and everywhere else trying to find specialized fittings to put a lot of this together and adapt over to your standard hose fittings that all the hydraulic shops make around here. So what I'm doing right now is trying to figure out how to get all these lines up and out of the way, see what needs some extra protection and testing everything. I've already run the grapple, it works, that's the good news. I just bled the air out of the lines and cylinders. Now I'm trying to get everything as out of the way as I can. I'm going to be honest with you. 
I was going to cut these hoses off, go get them out and put quick couplers like here, like you see on the front of other tractors. I still may do that, but I'll be honest with you, all this come out to be a considerable amount more than I was expecting. And we would have to special order some other fittings, it sounds like, to do that. So I'm probably gonna leave the hoses long like this, loop them on the tractor, run it this way for a little bit and make my mind up if I'm gonna go get these cut off, get those special adapters and put me in a plate right here with quick couplers so it looks more like a traditional tractor hookup. Now I personally opted to not go with hard lines which is what the factory I had here for a couple of reasons. One, well, my local hydraulic shop doesn't make hard lines. And two, if I ever bust something out in the field, it's easy to take these rubber hoses off with these quick connects and I can go to a nap or just about anywhere and get a hose made up relatively quickly. All right, so let's run this up and down and see how I need to move and protect these hoses, how much they get in the way with say cylinders coming down, I can already see that's probably gonna be a little bit of an issue over here. It might not be. Okay, we got a little rubbing going on the hose over here. I think I can zip tie that out of the way. So check this out. I have never in my life seen a grapple that'll open up this much. That's insane. I can go grab the biggest brush pile you can imagine with the exception of how much I can actually lift. But I hate, hate grapples that I see that'll just open up that much. You can't get around a big old nasty brush pile. This won't have a problem. Okay, plenty of hose length. So after looking around my shop and thinking about it, the right thing is some heavy duty expanded metal back here. I'll weld a piece all the way across about six inches high. So it's very lightweight, no additional weight to the tractor, nothing odd. I can see through, see what's going on in front of me and it'll protect the hoses. Problem is the little bit of expanded metal I have is very lightweight stuff. I'd be worried that a lamb's just gonna poke right through it. So I'm gonna have to make a trip back to the metal shop for that. So let me get this greased up. Let's go out, pick up a little brush, a few things, test this out. And then whenever I make a trip back to the metal shop, we'll beef this last section up. And I think this will be complete. All right, my friends, so this should be the test right here. This is a full length power pole, and it's very solid on this other end. This is a lot of weight, and most important, it's a lot of weird leverage. So if I can pick this up along with the weight of the grapple, I feel pretty confident. I can go pick up a lot of logs and firewood and trees and other things. Now if I can get my dog, get back out of the way. Let's see here. Oh, wow. We're lifting it no problem. Check that out. Holy smoke, y'all. And trust me, this camera's not doing it justice. This is a huge power pole. 
the other end is massive. It'll be nice and easy. This is a lot of stress on my tractor and axles right here. This is why you want to counterbalance on the back side. Okay, well my tractor obviously has really good lifting capacity. Pick this massive 30 plus foot long power pole up all the way to this grapple and it didn't even really feel like a struggle. Get this other end over to y'all and show it off. It's really big. And surprisingly, my tires are not pooched out on the front end. Everything feels good. It's just a lot of leverage and that stress on the loader arms and axles. This is a good looking power pole. So maybe this will, right, so maybe this will give you an idea how big this thing is and how long. <laughs> I can't believe it picked that up as easy as it did. I thought this is where I was going to struggle. So I have not lost as much lifting capacity as I thought. I'm pleased with that. This up in there and drop it behind all these other poles. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I love having me a grapple. Alright, now we got some old firewood over here. I've been wanting to clean this area out so I can get it mowed up. Let's get these firewood rounds moved over to where I have a few more. Should be an easy job cherry picking these right now. Let's see if we can just get lucky and grab a couple here. Well, just one. But I could never do that before. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> ah, yeah. Can only get the clamp on one piece. That's okay. It's so nice not having to get out of the tractor and have to go lift all these by hand and roll them up into a bucket. This is so nice. This is definitely one of those things you ask, why didn't I do this sooner?
All right, so there was a quick demonstration with the grapple since this video is mainly about installing the hydraulics on the tractor. Now, I'll admit the hydraulics went a whole lot easier than I was expecting, and that's thanks in part to a really good John Deere installation manual. Now, after going to the hydraulic shop and getting all my hoses and everything built, I believe in hindsight, I probably should have went with the hard lines and full hookup that runs down the loader arm from John Deere. Nothing wrong with the setup that I got now. It's very easy to go to replace that if I ever tear anything off, but it would only have been about two to 250 more dollars to do the full hard lines along with the coupler hookups and the real professional look had I went with the full John Deere kit. But at the end of the day, I did save about 200, 250 dollars doing the rubber lines and hookups that I have here. I see a couple little leaks. I need to go snug some fittings up. That's to be expected. And most importantly, anytime you add a load onto your hydraulic system like this, we just had to fill all those lines, all the cylinders. You need to make sure you top your hydraulic reservoir off. So I'll be going back and double checking that again for the second time. I've already bought all the hydraulic fluid that I need. We'll top that off. That way the tractor runs as intended and the levels where it needs to be. So a huge shout out and thank you to all our viewers who helped make this happen. And hopefully you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you on the next one where we're going to be putting this to some serious use. I have a lot of logs, firewood, brush, limbs to drop, trees to drop. This is about to get a huge, huge workout. Catch you on the next one.